Deep in the Himalayas, China has begun construction on the largest power project in history, cutting across the deepest canyon in the world, producing enough electricity to power the entire United Kingdom, and saving up to 60,000 lives. But at what cost, and why now? Building has now started on the world's largest hydroelectric dam on the Tibetan Plateau. But the project has sparked concerns and criticisms in neighboring India and Bangladesh. Tibet is the water tower of Asia. It's the source of almost all its major rivers, supplying nearly 2 billion people downstream. It also sits nearly 4.5 kilometers above sea level, making it the highest elevation region on Earth. Because of this, Tibet has immense hydropower potential, with 210 gigawatts sitting within China's borders alone enough to power nearly all of Brazil. As a result, throughout the 20th century, China built several small-scale hydropower stations across the region. Then, in the 2000s, as its economy exploded, China took development to a whole new level, adding numerous large-scale hydro projects across the region. But this was only the beginning. Quietly, within its ministries, Beijing began planning something larger, a project unlike anything ever attempted in human history. Then, in December 2020, China announced its plan to build the largest power plant in the world in eastern Tibet. Four years later, construction was approved, and on July 19, 2025, at a groundbreaking event in the city of Nimuchi, Premier Li Chang kicked off construction. China's mega hydro plant, known as the Medog Hydro Power Station, will be located along the lower reaches of the Yarlung Tsangpo River in Medog County, Tibet, within the deepest canyon system in the world, the Yarlung Tsangpo Grand Canyon, which has a maximum depth nearly three times that of the Grand Canyon. Specifically, along a section called the Great Bend, which features a 2,000-meter elevation drop across a 50-kilometer stretch. The project will be a run-of-the-river type, with at least four 20-kilometer-long tunnels drilled through the Namcha Barwa Mountain that will divert water into five Cascade hydropower plants with a total capacity of 60 gigawatts, equivalent to the entire power capacity of Egypt. This will make it the largest power plant in the world, nearly three times the current record holder, the massive Three Gorges Dam in China. Every year, the stations will generate an estimated 300 terawatt hours of electricity, enough to power the lives of over 42 million Chinese citizens, or nearly the entire UK. In total, the station will cost an estimated $167 billion, over 146 times the modern-day cost of the Hoover Dam, and greater than the entire California high-speed rail project. And with such enormous ambition comes an even greater impact. One second while I mix this up. I've been drinking AG1 lately because it helps me stay focused and avoid that midday crash when I'm deep in work on futurology. Because I felt the difference, I reached out and partnered with AG1. So if you want to try it, my link in the description gets you a free flavor sampler and a bottle of vitamin D3K2 with your first subscription. Now, back to the video. The Maidog Hydropower Station is a cornerstone of China's Jidian Dongsong strategy, which directly translates to West to East Power Transmission, a national push to transmit renewable energy from the remote but resource-rich western regions of China to the economically developed and energy-hungry eastern regions. This strategy will help electrify China's economy, reduce its dependence on foreign oil and natural gas imports, and symbolize its shift from the world's factory to a clean energy superpower. In addition, the station's baseload energy output 
will help stabilize variable solar and wind energy resources in the West. Moreover, every year, the station will prevent 145 million tons of coal from being burned, cutting annual CO2 emissions by 317 million tons, roughly equivalent to the entire annual CO2 emissions of Italy. This will help China reach its wider goal of carbon neutrality by 2060 and our planet's fight against climate change. The project will also save thousands of lives. Every year, air pollution in China contributes to roughly 1.4 million premature deaths. The main culprit, coal, which currently accounts for over half of China's electricity capacity, releasing toxic gases, heavy metals, and fine particles into the air that raise the risk of countless diseases. By preventing air pollution, the Maydog Station will save an estimated 12 to 60,000 lives every year, while simultaneously improving the quality of life for millions and slashing national healthcare costs. In addition, it will help mitigate the ecological destruction caused by coal mining. Furthermore, the project will provide nationwide economic stimulus while creating an estimated 100 to 200,000 construction and engineering jobs and providing long-term employment through operations, maintenance, and logistics. And maybe most importantly for China, it will trigger economic stimulus and infrastructure modernization in eastern Tibet, helping integrate the region with the rest of the country. However, while Beijing celebrates this as progress, not everyone sees it the same way. For centuries, Tibet had its own distinct cultural, religious, and political autonomy. That changed in 1720, when the Qing dynasty asserted control over the region. However, in 1911, the dynasty collapsed and for decades, Tibet once again enjoyed a period of de facto independence. Until 1950, when the newly founded People's Republic of China sent troops into the region in what it called the peaceful liberation of former Qing territories. After being quickly defeated, a year later in May 1951, Tibetan officials signed the 17-point agreement, granting Beijing control over the region in exchange for promises of autonomy and religious freedom. Yet over the following years, China began breaking its promises. Then in March 1959, tensions came to a boil, and a massive uprising erupted in the capital of Lhasa. As Chinese forces moved into position around the city, the Dalai Lama fled into exile, and over the following days, the PLA began bombarding the city with artillery, killing tens of thousands of Tibetans. By March 23rd, the uprising was crushed, and PLA forces occupied the city. Their new policy? Strict control over the region. The Tibetan government was quickly dissolved, and over the following decades, communist reforms were implemented, over 6,000 monasteries were destroyed, and Mandarin was promoted as the main language. The result? Nowadays, many Tibetans carry a deep sense of oppression, political powerlessness, and anger over forced cultural assimilation. The Maydog hydropower station only intensifies these feelings. It is located along a river that is considered a mother figure in Tibetan Buddhism, and in an area considered the heart of Pemako, a hidden paradise prophesied to shelter humanity during times of apocalypse. For many locals, Maydog Station is not just a mega project. It is the transformation of a sacred landscape into an instrument of power. In addition to this controversy, the project risks degrading a region known for its rich biodiversity. Construction will disrupt river flow, fish migrations, sediment transport, and local habitats, while increasing the risk of landslides along the region's steep canyon walls. It will also introduce a mass migration of workers who risk polluting the area's fragile ecosystems. 
Furthermore, the project is in one of the world's most seismically active areas. In 1950, a magnitude 8.6 earthquake, the strongest inland quake ever recorded, devastated the region. More recently, in January 2025, a magnitude 7.1 earthquake struck the region, damaging 5 out of 14 dams that were inspected. Madog will face the same risks. Moreover, the project has raised deep concerns in downstream India and Bangladesh, where the Yarlung Tsangpo becomes the Brahmaputra, a river that serves as a critical lifeline for nearly 100 million people. Critics fear that by giving China control over the river's flow, it could one day unleash flash floods or withhold water, giving it what some call a chokehold on India's economy. In reality, these fears are likely overstated. Only around 15% of the Brahmaputra's flow comes from the Yarlung Tsangpo, with most originating within India itself from monsoon rains and other tributaries. In addition, the Madog Station's run-of-the-river design means it has limited capacity to hold or divert water. Still, India is apprehensive. As a result, in 2020, it announced that it was exploring the development of its own hydropower dam beneath the Madog Station to serve as a buffer. India was serious. As of 2025, it is actively pursuing the Upper Siang Hydroelectric Project, an 11 gigawatt, $13 billion dam just 100 kilometers south of the Maydog plant. And while this may seem dramatic, for India, the fears aren't purely about water. They're rooted in history. In 1914, during the Tripartite Simla Convention, representatives from British India and Tibet agreed to a clear border between their territories, known as the Mi'kmaq Line. However, China, who still considered Tibet as part of its territory, but held no real control, refused to sign, and considered the boundary legally invalid. Fast forward to 1947, and India gained independence inheriting the Mi'kmaq line in the province south of it, Arunachal Pradesh, as an integral part of its territory. However, when China retook control over Tibet in 1950, it rejected this border, instead claiming nearly the entire state of Arunachal Pradesh as its own province, Zhangnan. The result? Major tensions, which erupted in 1962 when Chinese forces crossed the Mi'kmaq line advancing deep into Indian territory and inflicting heavy losses before withdrawing from the region, humiliating India, and ingraining a deep sense of mistrust. Since then, India has retained control over Arunachal Pradesh, but China still claims it as its own, with occasional standoffs occurring along the border. And now, just north of this disputed border, the Madog hydropower station is rising. To China, it represents progress and national pride, but to India, it embodies a deeper unease over its powerful northern neighbor. Yet despite the tension, construction continues, with operations expected to begin sometime in the 2030s. On one hand, the project will generate massive amounts of clean energy, helping reduce carbon emissions, improving public health, and encouraging economic stimulus. Yet on the other, it will deepen Tibet's historical wounds, threaten the region's rich biodiversity, and risk elevating tensions along a highly contested border. Either way, one thing is clear. The Madog hydropower station will not just reshape a river, it will redefine the balance of power, nature, and faith in the Himalayas.